Hey. Okay, so we got the basics of GitHub down in that previous video, uh, GitHub Beginners. So now we're going to look at some ideas. I'm going to break these out probably into smaller videos so you kind of get an idea of some different ways to use GitHub with your looping environment to make things um, move and flow a little better for you and possibly give back to the code if you have some ideas and you're inclined to make changes um, to improve for the community or yourself. So I'm just going to start with a really basic one. This is probably something you won't end up doing, but just for the purposes of showing you what's available and how information flows, particularly for Night Scout, I'm going to do an example with CGM remote monitor and my Night Scout site so you can see an example. So uh, the way that all of us have created our Night Scout site is we went to the Night Scout repository, their version, Night Scout CGM remote monitor, and we forked a copy into our own account. So we went to the library, we borrowed their book, we made a copy, and we put it at our home library. So we have a fork of our own a copy in our home library, which is this. Um, when you fork it, you get the version as it was current back then. Um, so often what happens with Night Scout is our home copy gets outdated fairly quickly. Those guys are into developing pretty rapidly. And so you can actually see, if you wanted to, you could see how often they develop. You can look at the dev branch over on Night Scout's version at their at the public library and you can see the commit history and if you look on it February 18th, February 16th, February 7th, January 16th, January 3rd. So something's happening at that library copy on their dev branch pretty frequently and your home version in your account isn't going to be updated automatically unless you go through that compare and update with the pull request, the PR. So in the last video, we covered how to do those pull requests. Um, and so our Night Scout site is actually up to date in my repository. My home library is up to date. My master is even. My dev branch is even. Um, we updated those. In fact, it's ahead because of that update. So I'm good. I'm up to date. But maybe there's something that I want to tweak for myself. And so what I might want to do is tweak a color in the background of my Night Scout site. Maybe I want one of the pills to be different color or uh, something just changed and personalized for me. So what I want to do is make my own version of that cookbook in my own home library. Um, and let's say I like the dev branch. I'm going to switch to the dev branch. I'm on it. I'm also going to make sure I'm in my own copy. And I'm going to create a branch and I'm going to call pill color, for example. And basically, I'm creating a brand new copy of the dev branch. You can see that um, right here it says it's creating a branch called pill color from dev branch. So basically, it's taking my dev cookbook, it's exactly copying it, but renaming it pill color. So I have both of them existing side by side. So I'm going to do that. And I just created pill color. So I have a new version of the cookbook based on the dev branch. They're exactly the same right now. And I can look at this and say, okay, I've, I'm in pill color. And the reason why I want to do that is because maybe I just want to test some things out and make it personal to myself. So I'm going to call this one pill color. So let's say I want to go, um, to Anna's website um, and say, okay, I want to change some of these things. I just want to add a, a splash of color somewhere. Um, most of you probably don't use this very often, but under um, most of your browsers will have some sort of developer tools. Um, in Safari, it's under develop. Um, you can go to show page source and it opens up this panel on the bottom, which is kind of geeky, I get it, um, but one of the cool things is, is it allows you to play with the underlying code that creates the website you're viewing. And so a lot of times the colors are in there or the sizes of things are in there in this really funky way. And you can use this to actually live time change 
how your Night Scout site looks and preview the changes. So for example, um, let's say, we'll pick one here. Um, I don't know, what do we want to change? Maybe we want to change, um, here's a good one. Let's change this pill box, the background color of the pill box. We'll choose the color selector, pick on a color, and did you notice this color up here in the underneath the current BG, those pills change color. And you can change them on the wheel and you can see live time how those look. Maybe you say, yeah, you know what? I really wanted more purple in my site. So you say, yep, that's the purple I want. I want that purple color to just pop out. I feel better about it. So all the colors are translated into hexadecimals and it comes out as 7F. 1D80, right? Nerdy, but that's the way the colors are translated into this six digit um, color code. So now that we've selected that code, and I kind of like how it looks, I can get a preview. Yeah, that looks cool. Um, you can um, copy that code, and we're going to go to our actual Night Scout code and make that change. Um, so we can go to, for example, the code for how your site looks is under static, and usually it's a CSS, so um, which is a style sheet. And we can go in here, and I can find the uh, code, the page, that lays out all of those style uh, markers. So how big things are, what font, what color are all in here, I can click the pencil button to edit that file. And I can come down and find where that um, line was and make the change there. The I'm going to go back one sec. I think the one thing I want to, I'm making this change on my pill color branch. Um, if I made it on a different branch, I just want to make a note of that. But I specifically am customizing this pill color. So I'm going to do it on my pill color branch. So I'm going to edit this file, and as soon as it gives me the edit, let me refresh, edit, here we go. So I'm going to go down, and I think that was probably, here it is, um, so it's right here in the code, and I can find the background color, I'm going to copy and paste what the new color was that I wanted, and I'm going to say, a commit message. I'm going to say updated pill color line 175 and that'll let me kind of know an idea. I'm going to commit the change directly to the pill color branch or if I wasn't sure I could create even a new branch but I'm going to say yep that's the one I wanted on. So I can um, go back to my code and what we learned in the uh, previous video is we could check the commit history for example and I say yep there's my pill color that I changed. And now how do I get this to my Night Scout site so that it actually will change? Because if I refresh this and close it, that was only a temporary change. Um, that was just to visualize that developer tool is just a, a temporary change. So I can go to Anna's Night Scout site, the Heroku uh, control panel, and I go to deploy and so long as I'm connected to my GitHub repo, I make sure I'm connected to it. And it will pull in all of the branches from my repo that are available to deploy from. And so what I will want to do is choose the pill color branch because that's the one I've decided I'd like my site to look like and to use that code. I deploy the branch and it's going to build for a little bit. Um, so I'm going to just wait a sec. All right, cool. We have gotten a successful deployment. So now we will go ahead and take a look at how the site looks. That's the old way. We're going to refresh it. Uh, we might have to clear the cache. It might take a little bit to get.
get that going. But voila, there are our updated pill colors. Um, so that's pretty cool, pretty sweet, very easy to do. Um, but I just thought I'd kind of show you how it works um, for if you want to create a new branch, sort of customize things, that's how creating new branches, putting in your code work, is that you can do things at your home library and your home cookbook that don't affect anything at the library and only affect you and customizing your Night Scout site. You can play around with that page source. It's super easy and fun to sort of play around with that and change colors and sites and all of that kind of stuff. If you want to get a little bit more personalized, it's super fun. It might make them pop. Um, so anyway, that's one example, customizing your Night Scout site display using uh, the CSS. Anyway, catch you for another video here shortly. Bye.